Welcome. I'm Adam Miller, a consultant with the art of applying and a graduate of the University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. Today, we've got a question from our Q&A vault about negotiating scholarships. So let's take a look at what the client asked our consulting team. She writes in, I just received a scholarship from American for $30,000. Now, this is public policy school, the equivalent of about 40% of total tuition. However, I'd like to negotiate for more. I'm almost done with my intro to economics course that I had mentioned. I just have the final left and I have an A so far in the class. So basically this person is taking an econ class because they did not have a super strong quantitative background. And I'm just wondering how much I should ask for. Is it better to ask for a higher number, like doubling it and see if they accept that or meet me in the middle? Or should I begin at a low amount with the negotiations and just see if negotiations go up from there? AU doesn't have anything on their website about specific policies when it comes to negotiating scholarships. And I've spoken with students who are attending right now, and some have said that they've even just called the admissions people and asked for more money over the phone and they got what they needed. I plan to be more formal and write a letter to them but I'm just not sure where to start money-wise. Any advice from consultants or other experiences from clients who have already begun negotiations will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I love the thoughtful response that Virginia writes back to this client and uh, there's so many great points. So let's dive into it. She says, great question. I always advocate for asking a higher amount when you negotiate. I totally agree. I took a negotiations class in business school, and this is certainly something uh, they hammered home for us, which is um, start high. Don't go unreasonably high, right? Like you don't want to ask for not only a full ride, but a stipend and another $100,000 thrown in because they won't take that seriously. But you should definitely start with a number that is 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 high that feels even a little bit uncomfortable for you and then if they do end up meeting you in the middle that's much better than asking for that middle number and then they meet you halfway between that and now you left money on the table so um let's keep going here she says um uh, you are right that negotiations are usually better written because you don't want anything lost in a phone conversation i think that this actually could go either way uh, when you're on the phone with someone, it's a little bit harder to say no to them. Just like when you're in person to, with someone, it's harder to say no to them than over the phone. So there is a benefit, I think, uh, of actually scheduling time with those folks. But they might also be more skilled than you in the negotiations process. And um, you could, if you don't prepare well for that, uh, not end up getting what it is that you set out before picking up the phone uh, out of that conversation. So I think you're right to start with a letter. Uh, and I think that if you wanted to transition to talking with someone one-on-one, -on -one, do that at a later stage of this process. Next, got a couple more bullet points from Virginia. She says, um, I do think you can request double the amount of your awards. That would be like 80% of all of the tuition covered. That's fantastic if that happened. But keep these points in mind. Number one, what is Americans' maximum award amount? With public policy schools, sometimes they have some limits on these types of things that they, they restrict themselves with. Do they have an established set of fellowships? You want to keep this in consideration as a point of reference for yourself. For example, they might only have a couple of scholarships or fellowships that are full tuition, um, maybe even some including stipend scholarships on top of that. And those are awarded directly to a student um, who clearly was not you. So you can infer that the likelihood that you'll get a full tuition plus uh, stipend scholarship is very low. So if you ask for like the blowout maximum of not only do I want you to not make me pay for the school, but I also want you to help me pay for my living expenses, basically rent and food, um, that, that's probably not realistic to start that high. Um, similarly, full tuition at a lot of these programs, that can also be challenging. But I personally wouldn't rule that out as what you start with your asking here. Um, just know that 
it is uh, going to be rare for them to award those types of scholarships in general. And so you also want to be realistic about what they are most likely to do. So second bullet point here, this is the one that I agree with the most, which is besides having more scholarship money, you need to explain to them what the benefit is for them to give you that money. It's not just that now you're going to have a little bit less of a financial burden coming out of school. Like, Why does that matter to them? Because they're pretty confident that um, you know they want you to be there and that you'll be able to pay off any any loans but like what what's in it for them to make this happen and in this case i think what you should do is talk about why the service that you're going to provide to the world going into you know the nonprofit space or uh working for a government organization or it could be even consulting whatever the thing is that you really want to do, that you wrote about in your applications, that you've talked about with current students and alumni, you need to pitch them on why they should be so excited to make it so that it's easier for you to pursue that impactful career and not be as saddled with debt as you currently would be if you just accept what they've just given you. Uh, third is use your other awards as leverage. So if you got into any other schools and you got a scholarship from them, use that as a point for them to say, you know what, we really want you to come to our school. Um, and if you're saying this other school gave you more money, then we want to match it. If that means that you're going to want to come here. Ideally, you would have another scholarship award that is even higher and you can leverage that with this school uh, as you're requesting additional money. Uh, one other quick thing about this, which is that if you're looking at a school that is not as selective as the current program, but it did give you a big scholarship, they might not see that as important as a school that is a peer to theirs, right? So if you get into a school that is just, you know, frankly, not as high, highly regarded or as uh, well ranked as American, and um, they give you a full ride, and American here is giving you a little bit less than a half ride, then if you say, look, you need to match this in order for me to go there to, to your school at American, they're not going to really buy it as much because they might try to call your bluff on it a little bit and say, yeah, we're not giving you as much aid, but that school over there um, is not going to set you up for the same um, – you know, success in your career afterwards. You're not going to get the same quality of alumni. You're not going to get the same access to um, companies that recruit on their campuses. You're not going to get the, exactly the same amount of awesome faculty. And so you want it to be um, as close as possible, a peer school that has given you more money um, and or at least, you know, a similar amount of money. And then that'll be a good point of leverage to say, look, if you if you give me this, if you give me X, then we got a deal. If you don't, then I might go to this other school and that's going to, um, you know, hurt your yield. Uh, and it's also going to mean that you don't get my awesome presence in the classroom for two years. Finally, she says, you might've already found this, but we do have a template for scholarship negotiations in an email form to get you started. So that's an awesome resource. We have tons of resources like that for all of our clients so that they don't have to start typing from scratch. They can drag and drop a few things in and add other materials uh, to an email as needed. And another helpful exercise, put together a spreadsheet outlining your predicted budget. So you can kind of do this ground up to say, not only why you need to give me this money because I'm gonna make this difference in the world, but here's when you give me this money, what this is gonna mean for uh, my living standards. You can do a few different scenarios to look at what uh, debt and funding gaps you might take on if you stay with the 40% or if you moved it up to 80% or somewhere else in between and where you would get that other money in order to actually pay practically for school. Hopefully this is helpful and um, let me know if anyone else has thoughts, she says. So another client actually weighs in here and asks a similar question. So let's address that before we wrap up. She goes, uh, thank you to the other client for raising this important question. Hey, Virginia, I want to uh, add to that question. 
and asked for some specifics related to the school that she went to, that Virginia went to, um, Chicago's Harris School. Uh, since I know you have experience of going there, does the same strategy you listed above apply to Harris? In my case, I got $25,000 per year to attend. Uh, do I have any grounds to negotiate for more? If so, how should I start this negotiation? And Kanisha, just our founder and CEO, nails it right off the bat, uh, coming back with a similar point that Virginia had made, which is you always have the right to ask for more money, and you should. Bring your financial aid letters and financial aid appeal email drafts to us at The Art of Applying, right? If we have a weekly Q&A call that you're planning on going to, uh, send those in or just pull them up and we'll review them as a group and then everyone can benefit or submit them directly to your consultant. Uh, letters do work. So the original client says, um, uh, thank you to Virginia for her initial response, and a thank you to Kanisha for her uh, responses to this other client, and that she just submitted her um, planned drafts of her email um, for her to take a look at, as well as to bring it up in the next coming uh, the weekly Q&A call with all of the clients. Uh, finally, we see that Virginia responds to the second client uh, talking about the Chicago um, Public Policy School and says, from what I remember, Harris had a form where you submitted your scholarship requests. Same advice applies, though. Having leverage in the form of other offers as well as thinking through what the maximum is and um, you know why you really need this help is going to go a long way. As far as amounts go, you should take some time to think through some scenarios that I, I, I shared. Uh, and you can also take a look at the named scholarships and fellowships that the school already has and request to be considered for those, um, especially if you haven't already been awarded a scholarship under the name of someone who has designated it for a particular purpose. And Kanisha agrees with that. She says, when you name a specific scholarship, it makes it much easier for them to give it to you because they don't have to dig through the dozens of scholarships that are in their database. Now you just said, hey, look, I fit this profile, or I really want to go do XYZ that's related to this scholarship. If they haven't already awarded it to anyone, it's a lot easier for them to just go, okay, perfect. This will make this person happy, and now they want to come to our school. Um, Kanisha had success doing this at Harvard, she says, uh, where she asked for a specific scholarship, and they gave it. So that is it for today's question from the Q&A vault. Hopefully you found it informative and a little bit entertaining. And if you want any help getting into or negotiating between various offers to your dream graduate school, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at theartofapplying.com. 